Now let's complete our practice problem number one. As you can see, we have a 12470 three phase four wire system. This four wire indicates that it is a, a Y system and that the phase to ground value now, we would find that value by dividing 12470 by the square root of three or 1.73. When we do that, we'll find that each phase then will represent 7,200 volt. Now on our feeder diagram, the diagram that represents the feeder feeding this transformer bank that we're working on, now to draw that in, what we have to do is come down here to our scale. Here we have one eighth of an inch represents 600 volts. We know we're going to have a Y diagram here. To find the exact length of that particular um, phase value or that vector that represents the phase, we would divide 600 into the 7200 volt, which would represent that vector, and would find that it would go in there 12 times. That means we have 12 eighths, which is which is one and a half inches. So let's draw in that vector. We've got one and a half inch vector here. And then we'll draw in the other two phases. I've got it marked on my triangle here, so we'll draw those in. Okay. Now we've got it scaled out. We know that the phases go in the clockwise direction. We can start actually anywhere putting our phases in, but they'll always have to go in the clockwise direction. I would get used to always putting your phases in the same place. It doesn't make any difference other than it's, it's simpler. I always use a phase out here. And of course to represent the high side of our system, we'll always use uppercase letters. Okay. Now we know that our Y high side systems are always going to be grounded. We'll draw those in there. And you can do this if you want to. You can draw the voltage values in. It doesn't really make that much difference, but it, uh, it, it would probably be easier maybe for you to understand. Then if you want to put a dotted line between your phases and, and write 12470, you can do that as well. Now, Instead, what I'm going to do is go over to step number two, and then we'll indicate the phase-to-phase -phase value. We know the phase-to-phase -phase value is the same as our system voltage, so we would know then that we would have, have 12,470 between A and B. And between B and C, we would have the same. And between C and A, we would have 12,470. Okay, phase to ground our neutral, you see, is grounded out in the center. We know that we have 7,200 volts phase to ground. Okay, now let's go to step number three. Now on sheet B, you see, we've got, of course, the same system bullied. What we're supposed to do for step number three now is indicate the voltage values we have between our phases and phase to ground. So between A and B here, we want to put 12,470. Okay. And B and C, we'll put 12,470 again. In between phase and ground, we have 7,200 volt. Okay, now we'll go to step number four. Now in step number four, what we want to do is identify the terminals on our transformer. As you can see, we have a four bushing transformer on the low side. Our transformer is rated 167 kVA. Our coil voltage from our rating, we know is 7200 volt. That means, according to the NEMA standards, that this would be an additive transformer 
because the voltage, coil voltage now on the high side is under 9,000 volt. And the KVA rating is below 200 KVA, so we know it's an additive transformer. Additive or subtractive, we know that this would be the H1 terminal. This would be the H2 terminal. On the low side, then for an additive transformer now, we would have X1, X2, X3, and X4 in that order. You want to remember that 167 through 500 kVA, we don't have in, any internal connections. We have big spade lugs and they're all outside. We make our, our connection on the outside here. Now we also know by this rating that we want 120, 240 volt. And that we want three phase four wire. We want, then we know we're going to have a delta connection because we have a rating one to two. And that we need the full voltage out of each transformer. To do that, then we know that we're going to tie the center two together here. And then we're going to come out with these two. This is the way our connections will be made on the transformer itself. And that we will also ground out that particular transformer. Okay, now let's go to step number five. Now in step number five, we want the primary coil voltage. By its own rating, we know that if we have a 7200 volt system, that we would connect at delta. If we had a 12470 system, we would connect at Y. Either way, we're looking at a coil voltage of 7200 volt. So we'll indicate that down here now. Okay, now let's go to step number six. We stated that if we had a 12470 system that we would connect it Y. We took that from the, from the transformer rating. That means we're going to have a Y connection on the high side. Our diagram down here is going to look just like the, the, the high side system. So we're going to use the same procedure. We know we're going to have a Y connection. We know that each coil voltage will be 7200 volts so that we're going to have to draw a 7200 volt vector phase to ground all the way around. If we take 600 into 7200 you see it comes out with 12 eighths. So what we need is, is a vector diagram here that represents 7200 volt to ground. So it's going to look like this. Okay. Now we know, now, now we have a delta low side connection so that we have the option of, of floating at our grounding. Let's ground out our high side. Okay, then we'll put our phases A, B, and C. Uh, our neutral would be in the center. Um, we have a delta low side connection. We don't have to worry about the direction of our polarity on the low side. So let's just go ahead in the high side now. We'll put in our polarity. We'll put all the H2 terminals on the inside and all the H1s outside. Let's just go ahead and identify our transformer numbers. T1, T2, and T3. Okay. Okay, now let's go to step number seven. In step number seven, what we want to do is connect up the high side of our transformer bank the way we have it drawn in our primary diagram here in, in step number six. So what we want to do is connect this high side just the same way we've got our diagram. Now you see we've got all our H2 terminals tied to ground 
and we've got all our H1 terminals here all the way around uh, connected to our, our different phases. So let's connect it up just that way. I like to make sure I've got my tubs all grounded for safety, so we're going to do that first. Okay, we know from step number four that this is my H2 terminal, this is my H1. We've got all the H2 terminals tied to ground like this. Okay. Remember now transformer number one. We're numbering our transformers one, two, and three. Uh, H1 went to A. Two over here now goes to uh, B. And three goes to C. And we have our high side connection made up. Now step number eight. We don't have to worry about that because we don't have any internal connections and we've already drawn that. So let's go to step number nine. In step number nine we want to draw our low side diagram, our secondary diagram. And if you'll remember that we want 120 three phase four wire on our low side. We know from the numbers now, not the wires. Now we know from the numbers one to two that we need a delta connection. So we're going to draw a delta connection here. And we want and we want uh, one eighth of an inch to represent ten volts. Now we know that our that our transformer now represents represents 240 volt. So if I take my 10 into 240, it'll go in there 24 times. Then we have 24 eighths, which is three inches. So each low side vector will represent, will represent 2400 volts, and it'll be three inch vector. Now remember these little crosses now, they're all one inch apart. Also remember over here that we want a standard displacement. And remember that standard is the least possible displacement. And we've got a Y delta connection. The least possible displacement on that is going to be 30 degrees. So when we draw our diagram, we know that each phase over here is going to go 30 degrees. A over here is going to go 30, B will move 30, C will move 30. We're going to have points that are going to look just like this. In other words, from here to here to there, we will have, have our vectors. Okay, now let's draw those vectors in to represent the low side. You want to use those little crosses we've got in there. It makes it a lot more convenient. Okay. Okay, now we said each phase goes 30 degrees. Of course, here's the center of our diagram. If I was to take my Y and superimpose it on top of here, you'd see we would have a diagram that looked like this. Then you'd see that we would have A then that would go 30 degrees. Okay, so A will be right here, B, and C. Now remember that from the high to the low side that our vectors have to go in the same geographic direction. Now you see transformer number one over here is going east. And of course anything, any vector that's in the same plane represents the same phase angle or the same transformer, if you will. If this is the high side, then this is the low side. If this high side is going east, then the low side has to go east. So let's just draw a vector arrow in there. Now that means we're standardizing now, saying low, low to a high number. That means that this terminal has to be X1, and this has to be X4. Remember, we have a four bushing transformer. We've got our X2 and our X3 tied together in the center in here. 
we won't draw that in there right now. Okay, now remember that the, these two vectors here now, transformer two, going in the northeasterly or southwesterly in this case, that that the low side has to go southwesterly as well. So we'll put that in there. So then we have x1 and x4. Same way over here. This was transformer one, this was transformer two, and this is transformer three. And this one has to be going in the northwesterly direction, so we'll draw that in. We'll go x1 and x4. Now you remember we want 120, 240 volt. If I left it just like this, I would have three phase, three wire. And it would be 240, three phase, three wire. And we'd normally ground a corner. On the low side, you always want to ground somewhere. And that's for safety. Anytime you're running it into the consumer, you want to ground somewhere. That, that just, just in case maybe that transformer should short out turn into an auto transformer and you don't want to send high voltage into the system you want a fuse to blow right away so so we want to ground somewhere well now we want 120 240 volt which means we want the half the value of one of the transformers so what we want to do is is pick one of the transformers and they're all three the same size uh, if we had a if we had a large single phase load we would uh, normally have that particular transformer larger. The, the transformer that's grounded will handle two-thirds of the lighting load. So now let's just, let's just pick one of these transformers. Now we'll take the center of this one right here and we'll put our ground on there. And that'll be our lowercase n. And of course that's our fourth wire. So then we have from A to N now you see we would have 120 volt. Look at it graphically you see. Here B to N we'd have 120 volt. And then of course between our phases all the way around if we would use our scale measure it all out you would see that we would have 240 volt between our phases all the way around. Now across the center in other words from C to N if we would measure that out you would see we would have 208 volt coming across the center here. In other words, if we graphically measured it from, from our lowercase n to our c, you would see that we would have that we would have 208 for a voltage. That that one a lot of times called the high leg. Most of them call it high leg or wild leg. Okay, now let's go to 10 and then indicate those same voltage values. Okay, for number 10 now we'll indicate the line to line or phase to phase value, if you will. And, of course, between our phases all the way around, we've got 240 volt. Okay. From A to N, there, remember we had 120 volt. From B to N, we have 120 volt. And our high leg is 208 across the center. You want to get in the habit of looking at, at your diagrams graphically. That's one of the advantages in vectoring it out. You know what voltages are available at the different points. Okay, now let's go to 11. Now for number 11, what we want to do is indicate the voltages available on our, on our low side bus, if you will. I'll use this finer pin and see if I can, uh, can indicate this. Okay, remember from our, our A to our neutral, we had 120 volt. Between our phases, we have 240 volt. 240 volt. Okay, now here we're going to our neutral up here from B. We'd have 120 there as well. Uh, from our C to our neutral, remember we had 208. So this is a situation that we would have. Okay, now let's go to 12. We want to connect it up the same way we made our diagram. So let's follow our, our diagram. Remember now you follow along with yours. And what we'll do, transformer number one, remember that we've got X1, X2, X3, and X4. And we know that we want to tie 
the center two, x2 and x3 together. Then we've got x1 and x4 like this. Okay, transformer number one, x1 goes to A. So we'll draw that all the way down to A. We know that the terminal x2 and x3 tied together in the center on transformer one is going to be grounded. So we're going to take it from one of those terminals and go right on down to our neutral. The reason I say one of the terminals is normally you're going to come from a terminal. You're not going to use an extra connector in between them. You're going to come from a terminal. Okay, then X4 will go down to B. Okay. Transformer number two now, X1 goes to B. X4 goes to C. Okay, transformer number three now, X1 goes down to C. And X4 now goes back to A again. Okay. There now we've got our connection complete. We covered a lot of ground in this class. If you have any problems with the inductive and capacitive reactants, you want to go back and, and review that. That's critical to the fourth year. You'll find that in the fourth year we'll cover impedance and power factors of circuits and so on. You want to know that well. Also on transformers, the thing to watch in your transformers when you make your vector diagrams is be sure and, and, and get your vectors to be in the same geographic direction. In other words, the transformer from the high to the low side of each transformer are tied to the same phase angle. That means they, the vectors which represent those particular coils, those particular sides of those transformers, have to be in the same geographic direction. And then from there, make sure that you understand what your phase displacement is. When we say phase displacement, we're talking about the rotation of your phases from the high to the low side. And then, of course, remember the difference between your alternate and your standard displacements. Remember that when you get a displacement, that the phase actually rotates around a pivot in the center of that diagram. It rotates to the right. If you're getting a 30 degree displacement, the low side is going to rotate by, by 30 degrees. If you need any practice problems, whether it be for calculating uh, circuits uh, uh, or transformer connection. If you need practice on transformer connections, uh, hit us up about that too. We'll send you some practice problems. Now, of course, when I come around in the summer, I'll, uh, we'll, I'll go over transformer connections with you again. If you need any practice there, there again, we'll, we'll help you out. Transformers are very critical of the program. I, I get many people that'll ask for a class just on transformers. Uh, they'll, uh, utilities will, will talk about mistakes made on transformer connections and how much it costs them. So, so the utilities understand how, how important it is to understand transformers. If it wasn't for the transformer, our industry wouldn't be possible today. So no matter who you work with, you're going to be involved with transformers. Now remember, if it's not grounded, it's not dead. And if it's not dead, wear your rubber gloves. Do it. And then we'll see you at our next class.